In order for us to find the electric flux through each of the described surfaces, we're going to have to take advantage of Gauss's law, which is stated right here. Let's take a look. It says that the electric flux symbolized by this Greek letter here through any closed surface is equal to the net charge inside of that surface, which would be this symbol right here, divided by a constant epsilon. For those who are interested, that value of epsilon is given right here. So basically to find the electric flux, what we simply need to do is find the total charge inside of the Gaussian surface and then divide it by a constant. We will see how straightforward this will be. Let's take a look at surface labeled S1. You can see S1 is delineated by this dotted outline right here. And for S1, if we're going to calculate the total net electric flux, then all we need to do is figure out the total amount of charge inside of that dotted surface. We see that there's a charge of negative 2q and another charge of positive 1q. So basically you just add those charges together. So you would have negative 2q plus the positive 1q and then divided by the constant epsilon which I am struggling to draw right now. So let's try that again. Uh, hopefully that's good enough. So if we add negative 2q and 1q, we're going to get negative 1q or just negative q. And then that would be divided by that constant. And that would be the answer for the electric flux through surface one. We'll come up here to do surface two just so we can keep the picture in view. And then surface two, we may wish to highlight it. Surface two is this sort of blue area right here. And this one's kind of interesting because if you look inside there, there's a charge of plus Q and negative Q. So watch what happens here when you add them together to get the total charge inside of that Gaussian surface. You're going to have Q plus negative Q, and then that's going to be divided by epsilon. Of course, Q plus negative Q is just zero. So you get zero over epsilon, which is just zero. So the correct answer for the electric flux through surface two is zero. Next, moving on to surface three. Let's highlight it again. Surface three is delineated by the black outline right there. Now that region contains three charges, it looks like. So negative two Q, positive Q, and negative Q. So let's add those all together. And that's gonna help us get the total electric flux. So we'll go negative two Q plus one Q and then we're gonna add a negative Q, so we might just subtract Q there. And then again, divided by epsilon. Q minus Q is zero, those cancel out. So this leaves us with a total electric flux expressed as negative two Q divided by epsilon. So that would be the correct answer for surface three. Finally, we move over to surface four. Let's be careful that we highlight it correctly. Surface four is this green surface. Well, this is strange. Look inside the green surface. Do you see any charges enclosed by it? I do not. So there is a total charge inside of surface four of zero. So you're gonna have zero divided by epsilon, which is just zero. So that would be the total electric flux through surface four. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, no problem. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos regardless.